Hey there, it's Stephanie Shea. I'm making sure I'm on here. Welcome to the Facebook Live event. Yes, it looks like everything is up and running. And I'm so glad to be here today. It feels like it's been quite some time since the last Facebook Live we got together at the lunar eclipse on June 5th. And I don't know about you all, but that feels kind of like a lifetime ago. There has been a lot going on and we got through since June 5th, uh, three eclipses total. We're coming into a period that actually is a breather, believe it or not. It does <laughs> may not seem like it, but coming up in the end of July and August, there's no inner planets retrograde, which is a bit of a break because we just finished a Mercury retrograde cycle that ended in mid-July and we will have a small window of opportunity to move forward. But what I wanted to give people a heads up about today was Mars retrograde because this is kind of a more rare phenomenon. It's more rare than Mercury retrograde. We work with Mercury retrograde about three, sometimes four times a year for anything from three to six weeks at a time. People are kind of used to that one. Mars retrograde is every two years. Um, so it's, it's a bit special in that way. And tomorrow we enter what's known as the shadow phase of this. The shadow is when Mars is starting to cover some of the ground that it will again cover once it's moving from our perspective. It's all Earth-centric perspective um, when it will cover that ground. So by the time we finish Mars retrograde, it will be at 15 degrees Aries. However, tomorrow moving forward, Mars will be at 15 degrees Aries. So it's beginning what's known as the shadow. However, for this year, that really is as good as it gets for moving forward, and especially before August 16th. I'm marking this as an important window because after August 16th, Mars will begin to slow and prepare for its station retrograde. And the actual Mars retrograde station date is September the 9th. Um, the official dates are September the 9th through November the 13th. So the, that's the big chunk of time. And we're in the prep mode now. And I wanted to give everybody a heads up because this is some of the more volatile astrology of 2020. And when you're mindful of it, when you're aware, you can really use it productively. But it's kind of like fireball <laughs> and it has to be handled with care. Mars is the ruler of the sign Aries and Aries really is about passion, ambition, you know, how we take action. It's also about anger. So you can see if Mars is just moving direct in the sign of Aries, how we would feel especially fired up. <laughs> and then when you factor in Mars moving retrograde, it can bring out some of what's known as the more shadow traits of the sign of Aries, which can be impulsiveness, impatience, and even combative behavior. Uh, Mars is a young, fresh energy. It's full of enthusiasm and strength, but yet it maybe doesn't know how to channel that energy. I picture it as, as a person, a younger person with, with a lot of potential and energy that maybe just needs to learn how to direct their energy. If we picture that kind of thing going on during Mars retrograde, we can direct ourselves or it's also a good time to seek a mentor. And I'm going to talk about Mars's interaction with some of the outer planets this fall as it's in retrograde and it was reminding me of wiser elders coming in to help these young strong warriors shall we say the mars energy um work most effectively 
um, be in it for the long haul, not just immediate satisfaction, but channel this energy that's huge right now to try to move forward in a very sustainable way. So that's like some of the big themes of this. Uh, it should be noted that Mars, even though it goes retrograde every two years, it actually does not uh, meet the same sign every time it's retrograde. So it hasn't been retrograde in Aries since 1988, 32 years ago. And we won't have another Mars retrograde in Aries for 47 more years. It's not quite an even time frame. Um, and so the year 2067. So this, you know, that also makes this unique and special. And uh, I want to point out as I'm talking about this stuff that we will have space at the end of this talk for some questions for the q and I'm keeping an eye on the comment box. Um, so I always love connecting with people that come on to the Facebook Live events and um, definitely want to hear, you know, people's questions or maybe an experience that you've had or maybe there's some Mars retrograde babies out there. It should be noted that if you were born under a Mars retrograde, this could feel like a very empowering time. You are used to this energy. You're probably very self-aware, good at taking mindful action. Um, in this case, you might serve as a guide for others who find this Mars retrograde energy unsettling. Um, so as I mentioned, we've got Mars in Aries. It's gonna retrograde from 28 degrees of Aries starting on September the 9th, all the way back to 15 degrees of Aries by the time it finishes on November 13th. And the things that we can do individually to work with this energy are to realign ourselves with ideas that inspire us. This is something that's really positive about a Mars retrograde. I think in general, retrogrades tend to get a stigma in astrology for bad things happening or being unproductive. And sure, it can bring up, like I said, some shadow traits. People may not be at their best if they're not mindful. There can be delays. I think that's the, the bad rap. You know, people normally just like to get from A to B in a very linear, orderly fashion and have everything work out perfectly. But <laughs> the planets have some other things for us. And I, so I think knowing, okay, what can we do? with Mars retrograde. So thinking about, okay, what is something that had inspired me in the past that I actually want to get fired up about again? Some people may rediscover a creative passion or some activism passion or some passion related to their physical wellness. Um, this is something that I think will probably be revived in a lot of people wanting to feel physically stronger because Mars is such a physical planet and Aries is also all about strength. And this is a productive way to use the energy, but the thing to remember is that because of the impulsive nature of Mars retrograde and Aries, to take it slow with any new sports or physical activities that you initiate during Mars retrograde, follow all the safety rules, do less than you think you can. So say you're starting back running or something, you think you can do a mile right away, do a half mile, <laughs> these types of things. It's a very practical way to work with it. Um, you do want to keep your body moving, even some breathing exercises because of the physical nature of this. We're going to have a lot of frustration, I think, come up. Mars and Aries is so personal because Aries is all about the self. And so moving that through our body in a mindful way, yoga, whatever your thing is that helps you um, get grounded in your body, this is going to help you from taking impulsive actions and maybe accidentally hurting yourself. <laughs> so that's one to, good one to know. I think it's a really good time to identify where you felt stuck um, or unmotivated. This is such a good one. Um, 
it really literally can light a fire under you. Uh, so, oh, I'm finally going to finish my website. I'm finally going to do this. You don't really want to launch something brand new. Again, you don't want to have to start from square one. You're going to feel a lot of resistance doing that during Mars retrograde, um, especially because during this whole Mars retrograde cycle, it contains a Mercury retrograde. I'll mention those dates towards the end. Um, so it's really not a time to like, I'm opening a store, I'm opening a website, I'm going to go do this for the first time ever. It's more the time to get re-inspired about something, to finally get motivated to do something that you've wanted to do already. It's been on the radar, maybe it's had a few steps started, and if you haven't started, like I was saying, before August 16th, I think we'll still have some good momentum before Mars starts to slow down and ease towards its retrograde. So that's a good one to keep in mind. Mars and Aries also represents courage. I think about overcoming fear, addressing your fears and what you need to feel more confident. A lot of retrograde planet energy has to do with inner work. And so with Mars retrograde in Aries, it's a good time to think about well, why haven't you felt motivated for whatever it is? Could it be that something scares the heck out of you? <laughs> That's often the culprit. Um, and so then using that Mars energy, okay, I'm going to be strong. What do I need to feel more confident? Um, knowing that it's not the time to rush anyway, that could help you get going and overcome some fears. What do I feel safe doing just a small step? Uh, th those are really good things to think about. And I think it's also a great time to draw on your past accomplishments. Mars is all about overcoming adversity and challenges. And if you're coming into this Mars retrograde feeling extremely challenged, think back to other times in your life where it has felt very challenging and stressful and you didn't think you were going to be able to overcome whatever obstacle it was. And just that memory of whatever triumph, however big or small that you felt, can be so motivating, uplifting, and really help you to remember that you do have what it takes, that you've survived difficult things before, you know you can do it again. This is a great Mars retrograde in Aries theme to to follow. And so that's all the personal uh, aspects of this, just remembering to revise your strategies, leverage your past efforts, look within. These are all things we could start on right away, even before Mars goes retrograde. Um, and then there's, of course, like a big picture to all of this that I'm gonna to get to in just a minute. But I wanna highlight some of the birthdays of people who will probably feel this Mars retrograde quite personally. Uh, because if you are an Aries, I happen to be, happen to be a double Aries, Aries with Aries rising. I This Mars retrograde was on my radar because it's activating if it's hitting your your sun sign, and especially if you're an Aries born April 5th to April 18th. Um, at some point, this Mars retrograde is going to go right over where the sun is, <clears throat> excuse me, in your birth chart, which will feel, I think, very personal. And you may really get in touch with something that you've either been angry about or have felt unmotivated about or have felt that you need to do something about. And once you know, okay, that's Mars retrograde checking in with me, what's a mindful way to take action? Because you do want to do something. Um, you just don't want to do it impulsively. <laughs> so the other, here's some other birthdays that could have a special challenge with this Mars retrograde. Cancers who were born July 7th to 21st, they'll be feeling it, kind of a tense angle, known as a square. Libras born October 8th to 21st, they'll have the Mars retrograde opposing their sun at some point. Again, like what do they need to confront within themselves? 
what needs to be addressed. Uh, we got Capricorns, January 6th to the 18th. And this, again, is the square aspect. This could challenge Capricorns. What have they been afraid of? What do they need to overcome in order to achieve a goal? Now, a couple of the fire signs, I feel, will get a bit of a boost from this because the Mars retrograde is working in a more favorable aspect for them. So they may feel that they are um, really energized and they may actually end up helping out some of the other zodiac signs. So if you're Leo, born between August 8th to 21st or Sagittarius, December 7th to 20th, um, this could be a powerful time. But again, you're going to still have to check yourself. That applies to everybody. Um, it doesn't mean you're immune to the uh, impulsive tendencies of Mars retrograde in Aries, but I think it will feel a little easier for you because of the aspect it's making. So that is all um, hopefully some really helpful personal information, and that's most of the astrolo astrology that I do is helping people one-on-one -on -one how to work with what's happening in the sky to maximize it, especially personalized to your birth chart. But I do think this year is, is pretty fascinating astrologically and what's going on in the world is historical, unprecedented events. And so I had to look at some of this big picture stuff of what, okay, what is going on during this Mars retrograde in the big picture? Well, for one thing, I mentioned Mercury is going to be retrograde on top of the Mars retrograde for a section of time. And that window of time is October 13th to November the 2nd. Now, if you're in the United States, a lot of us are, um, November 2nd probably sounds familiar. That's election day. Um, so Mercury will be stationing direct on that day, but the day it stations is still kind of wonky. So you can consider it like, whoa, Mercury retro and Mars retro all leading up to the election day. The election day, not really in a stable <clears throat> astrological position. I, the, the assumption can be it probably won't be business as usual. There's a lot of things that can happen during retrogrades, uh, recounts, people dropping out, people winning, and then it turns out they didn't win, people contesting it. Um, all kinds of things can happen. I don't see this as an election where it's just, okay, we voted, it's clear cut, and we know. It, it looks kind of messy. Um, so that's not surprising. It's already looking messy. People uh, have seen that one coming, but that is in the astrology, something to keep in mind. Now, I found some dates in September that really caught my eye between no, uh, September the 9th and September 11th, those three days, 9, 10, 11, and maybe the 12th. That is unique because six planets will be retrograde at the same time on those four days. Uh, Jupiter stations direct on the 12th, so that's kind of a cusp day. But that's a very rare occurrence. There are some astrologers that have studied the statistics of all this, and it, it very rarely happens that six planets are in retrograde on the same day. The six planets will be Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto. So it starts on the 9th of September with Mars retrograde. And we get that window of three to four days on September the 12th. Jupiter will station direct. So then we'll only <laughs> have five planets in retrograde, which is still quite a lot. So that is pushing us to look at the past. Um, it We are being forced into being stopped kind of in our tracks this year so that we can do some cleanup. We can't just keep moving forward without addressing our past. And it's just become a huge front and center headline. 
And what's interesting is Jupiter will station direct on September the 12th, and then Saturn will station direct on September the 29th. So that, I think, by the end of September, even though we've got Mars retrograde all the way through the middle of November, I think the October and November part of it will have a different flavor because Jupiter and Saturn will finally be moving forward. And that's a key time because they will then officially be heading out of Capricorn. Jupiter and Saturn have been in Capricorn for a while. Jupiter, it's been about the past year. For Saturn, it's been about the past two and a half years. If you've listened to some of these other uh, talks or videos or read some of the astrology on janspiller.com that I do, you know that Jupiter and Saturn in Capricorn, as well as Pluto has been hanging out in Capricorn, <laughs> um, are putting the emphasis on systems, structures, governments, business, um, looking at what needs to be rebuilt. Uh, it's, it's plain as day in the astrology. And what I think will be helpful is knowing that Jupiter and Saturn are moving forward after the end of September, and they will be meeting up on the solstice, which is December 21st. Um, at zero degrees Aquarius, and that's going to bring in some fresh new energy. We'll also be out of all these retrogrades by then. Um, so I have a whole other video on the, the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction on the YouTube for Jan Spiller that you can check out. Uh, but I thought it was important to know that the initial motion towards this new era, <laughs> so to speak, is occurring during the Mars retro. So if you're feeling bogged down, if you feel, are we going backwards? Are we stuck? Keep in mind that outer planets have the bigger picture for us. They have our back. They are working on the next thing. But because Mars is an inner planet, Mercury is an inner planet, when we work with these inner planet retrogrades, we have to deal with the day-to-day small details that are work that are not like the big exciting visionary energies it's the things that have to get done before we can move into the bigger vision so i thought it was really important to note because jupiter saturn and pluto will all still be in capricorn during the time mars is going to be retrograde that at some point during the mars retrograde it will form a square because Mars and Capricorn are energies that square each other. It, it will square each of these outer planets this fall. We're going to have on the day that Saturn stations direct, Mars retrograde will be squaring it. And the way I decided to personify <laughs> these astrological energies is as if the outer planets are the older, wiser energies. Um, and Mars in Aries is the young, excited warrior. I'm using warrior not as like a warlike person or someone who wants to be violent, but more somebody who is ready to go out there and do something in the world and take action. And they have enthusiasm, potential, excitement, but they're young and new. That's Mars in Aries. Okay, it squares Saturn in Capricorn. This is wisdom. Um, this could help remind people to choose your battles, to accept some limits, how to do things in a way that will make a difference, not just today, but what about in 20 years from now? What about 100 years from now? I was thinking this morning about the movie, The Karate Kid. Um, <laughs> maybe some of you remember that, depending on your age. Or, it's such a classic. Hopefully everyone's seen it. But, you know, the young kid is, he really wants to be able to be strong and, and do things, you know, to, to stand up for himself. And um, Mr. Miyagi, you know, that's the wisdom, the older mentor who can come in and say, it's not all about, you know, getting in there and <laughs> kicking ass, so to speak, you know. It, yes, but here's, 
here's the wise way, here's the Zen way. Um, so that's a theme we've got um, on October the 9th, Mars retrograde will square Pluto. Okay, Pluto has been working in Capricorn to uncover corruption. We've been seeing that at work for quite some time. Pluto's been in Capricorn since 2008. It is digging things up that have been hidden so we can all look at it, even though we don't want to, and make it better. Okay, so there's an emphasis on acting above board with Mars retrograde square Pluto. And I think it will be a reminder to anyone who is challenging corruption to check themselves and make sure they're being ethical in their approach. Um, that's the wisdom of Pluto. Like, yes, we need to uncover the truth. We need to stop people from being dishonest, from, you know, not doing the right thing. However, how are you going to fight that? You have to fight a clean fight. Um, just because the other people are fighting dirty. This is the reminder um, from Mars retrograde square Pluto. Then October 19th, we have Mars retrograde square Jupiter. And this is, I think, going to be a tempering energy. Jupiter is a spiritual planet. This could be people checking with their spiritual guides, whether or not you belong to an organized religion. It could be someone from that community. It could be a personal spiritual guide that you connect with on your own, your higher power, however you frame it. Um, this is a time to balance hot-headed energies. <laughs> That's kind of a great description for Mars and Aries. Um, with something more spiritual, higher-minded, judicial, um, Jupiter is all about kind of the fairness of law. So these are things to think about um, as we're moving through this journey of, of Mars retrograde, that here's Mars. You could think of maybe Tarot as well, if any of you follow that or are Tarot readers. You know, Mars and Aries does remind me of the card, the fool, you know, and very um, eager and ready to ready to go for these these new horizons new adventures but encountering people characters along the way that can help um teach and learn and so if we approach mars retrograde you know as if we're that <laughs> we're the we're the fool we're ready to learn we're ready to do things um in a better way but we need to learn how um this this can be all very helpful ways to work with it. Um, and I think that covers most of what I was going to mention as far as um, what's happening, what the dates are, what the energies are, and how it applies personally as well as big picture. And I'm going to scroll in and let's see if I can find any of my lovely comments over here. I always uh, have a little trouble in Facebook Live finding where people are, are chatting with me here. So let's see one moment, because uh, I'm sure there, there might be some questions, comments, um, discussion. Yeah, okay. I might need some technical support on this. KJ can maybe help me find what the comment is. Um, KJ is works with us here at Jan Spiller. She is a fabulous astrologer and a lot of the social media posts that you see are created by her and she's telling me there is one comment and so I'm going to try to find it. So let me check out what the comment is here that I received. Um, oh, it's Renee! <laughs> Yay! Hi, Renee! Mercury and Mars retro at the same time is the worst. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. We're all, I was born under Mercury retrograde, so I feel like I get a bit of a pass. But I, in general, it's just the time to take it slow. You know, I'm picturing if you were cruising down the road and you're driving 60 and then you start seeing that swirly sign, um, that's, 
Mars and Mercury retro, like slow down because you really won't do well if you just keep going at the same pace. Um, it, again, if you have stuff to finish, just try to dig in to that for sure. Um, and so Connor says, um, hey, oh no, uh, there's someone else talking to Connor. That's great. Hi, Anne and Connor. And let's see, Mars is hitting a Mars return for me three times in Aries, seventh house. Hi, Barbara. Wow. Um, well, <laughs> it sounds like you're going to get a message about partnership and you'll have three messengers. So if it doesn't make sense the first time, <laughs> probably by the third time, um, but definitely it's a time, I think, to reflect on either current or past partnership and um, definitely not a time for anyone, maybe especially Barbara, but um, I should mention because Mars is one of the relationship planets not really the best time to make new relationship commitments. Uh, and so this is a good time to, again, take it slow, whether you're in a partnership and you're not sure what's up, it doesn't seem, maybe you are thinking about breaking up. Well, you don't have to make everything finite. You could just put something on hold and then in December, revisit it when we're out of some of this messier astrology. Or if you're single and you meet someone, you know, I, I'm a fan of love and relationships. I wouldn't want to tell someone like just to go hide out if they really want to connect, but just be so cautious. There's no energy supporting rushing into anything. And it's interesting how the pandemic seems to <laughs> magnify that in case we didn't follow the astrology. It's like, no, it really is a good time to get to know people very slowly over time. Um, so that's a great one, um, to remind me, Barbara, that yes, with relationships and Mars and, you know, cause Mars can be so passionate, um, but to try to temper that and realize, okay, if things are going to be right, it'll still be there. You don't have to go and just <laughs> jump into something right away. Um, so, wow, I just, I sure wish I could see the comments live myself. I don't, I, I really don't know what happened with that, but KJ has been awesome because she's sending me screenshots <laughs> of what they are. Oh, wow. I'm getting a lot more screenshots. Okay. Let's see what else I got on here. Um, oh, Connor says it's been a crazy roller coaster. I didn't know. So, oh, wow. You drove across country. Well, you know, it's not a bad time to have some adventures, I would say, as long as, again, you're being careful. Um, but Mars does bring out that part of us that wants to have some excitement. And so I definitely wouldn't say to hide under a rock or anything while Mars is retrograde. I think it is, it is a time to reconnect with the things that get us excited about life. And then, okay, how do we go about that kind of in a safe way. Um, and yeah, it can be very emotional because um, Mars does rule our, our passions. It's a it's an interesting planet because it's, it's a planet of action and emotion. And that's where sometimes we get in trouble with Mars <laughs> because people might wanna take immediate action on their emotion and then later on think, hmm, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have done that. Um, there's someone mentioning Sounds like they work with some clients. Um, confused about motivation and fatigue. Yeah, since the June 21st new moon. Um, yeah, I like how you say that, Makiko, the Lion Gates opening, um, <laughs> meaning Leo season, which just started um, on the 22nd. So that's another thing. Yeah, getting really clear about what you want. Um, that is a good thing to do under Mars retrograde so that when it goes direct, now remember Mars will be in Aries all the way until January, what is it, 6th of 2021. That's a long time. So if it goes direct on November 13th, we've got all the way until January 6th of the new year with Mars still in Aries. So if we've spent our Mars retrograde time being contemplative 
about ooh, what do we want to do when this energy is actually going to be working for us you know we can be like ready to go out of the gates after the mars retrograde so that is great um let's see what else has come in wow there's so many i'm gonna keep going till about 12 45 and then if i don't get to the comments um i will answer um you know online after but let's see um <laughs> that's fun. yeah okay um let's see questions questions reading oh jane this is really cool i've met a couple of jan's former clients that told me they had readings with jan spiller in her new york city apartment and she was a lovely and wise individual jane that is so special um yeah i think is it's remarkable she she had a long career i think she was a professional astrologer for at least 30 years and i heard a story about her um taking clients in her New York apartment and someone asked, well, aren't you worried about having strangers? And Jan said, oh no, I'm, I'm a psychic. And <laughs> it, that really was true for Jan. I don't bill myself as a psychic. I, I use a lot of intuition in my readings, but my experience with Jan is, yeah, she would probably know who to invite in her apartment and who not to. Um, and Lori, I'm so sorry that, that you learned this way that, that Jan had passed. We are, trying to like tell the story more on our website and um and it's always difficult to have to to tell people but um but thank you Lori we're we're doing everything we can to, to keep her memory going and and her books are such a fabulous resource they're gonna live forever <laughs> now let's see if that was the last one um and thank you kj for sending me these screenshots <laughs> this is this is a new one um yeah maybe because it's almost the shadow or we're not out of the shadow of mercury retrograde but um first facebook live time where i can't see the comments uh, <laughs> so i'll be troubleshooting that but um but this is is really wonderful I, i've been looking forward to this i kind of missed everybody since early June, but there's there's a kind of a tunnel to go through during, I felt during the eclipses in this last Mercury retrograde that um, was very internal for me. And I felt that for this Mars retrograde, this would be the right time um, to reconnect. And I, I'm guessing a lot of people kind of had a internal journey going on during june and july and um yeah as we as we head into august it's it's now leo season to me i can already kind of feel a difference being a bit more extroverted a bit more out there and um and we do get this nice mars and aries direct energy for a little while so i hope everybody can make the most of that um Let's see if there's any other comments. It looks like we're kind of winding that down. And again, I'll make sure, you know, to go in there. I'm sure I'll be able to see it later <laughs> and see what comments, I'm, you know, have happened. And I just want to thank everyone to, for taking some time out of their day to, to get this info on Mars Retrograde. And I hope it helps you kind of get in the right mindset for it another kind of analogy i was thinking about for this has to do with um fueling yourself just because aries is so much like the physical body and so it's like if you ate something with a sugar boost um you would have a lot of energy for an hour or so and then just kind of crash where if you eat something solids and proteins um <laughs> that'll keep you going uh, for a long time without the crash. This is the mindset we need to be in during Mars retrograde and Aries, especially. To me, that's a great philosophy most of the time, but um, yeah, that's that's good. We've got all this energy right now, and if we can just channel it to keep it going, um, there's a lot that we can get done during this time period. Um, but 
you know, I'm just so glad I had this chance to give the rundown on this. And you can always um, text us or drop an email um, at stephanie at janspiller.com if you want to, um, yeah, if you want to learn more about it. And I do want to mention, too, that um, the janspiller.com website is Jan Spiller's legacy. A lot of people follow um, her website today because of the famous books that she wrote. Uh, so she's the author of Astrology for the Soul, New Moon Astrology, Cosmic Love. There's a lot of titles. Uh, those are some of her most famous ones. And these are gifts that she left to us. Um, Jan Spiller is no longer with us. Most people know she left us in 2016, but she really wanted her website to live on as her legacy. And so that's what we're doing. There's a handful of family members and myself who had worked for her for four and a half years. And we are keeping her site going. There's still some of her original writing, which is really awesome in the reports. And then I'm creating the current content. And so if you subscribe, you're gonna help support keeping her legacy alive, which you know is, is so meaningful. And um, I encourage you to check out the site. We've got some cool things too. There's, there's very low cost subscriptions and one of the newest ones we started is only $2.99 a month. Um, so cheap. And every week you're going to get a text giving you the lay of the land for the astrology of the upcoming week. So to me, that's like pretty, <laughs> a pretty good bang for your buck. But there's also, yeah, just $4.99. There's lower cost memberships. And um, you'll get access to a lot more information if you're curious about the these astrological events so i think i'll close with that and i've really enjoyed spending time with everybody today and just be safe out there be well and um, be sure and check out janspiller.com website for memberships as well as checking out youtube channel because you'll get a lot of information on video there as well have a wonderful rest of your day everybody